there, all my Clawsome Possum Furbies. Thanks so much for some coming to hang out with us today. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this look. I'm going to show you how I create my Rock of Love Girl inspired makeup look. Everyone on TikTok is calling this look like Y2K trashy aesthetic with like animal print everything, zebra print bedroom, um, the duck feet nails, and then the girls that had like streaks in their hair and would wear like fox racing gear or like the affliction t-shirts that you used to be able to buy at Spencer's. But it's a whole ass vibe. I love it. I call it like trailer park chic. Like that was totally my aesthetic growing up. That was like the hot alternative girl like look. Like she'd hang out and date all the skater boys. And I just loved it. I thought it was hot. You pack if you were um had a bit more money I guess you'd shop at like um what is it? You would shop at like mm, what's it called? Pack Sun. So like, you know, like surfer, skater, skater sort of vibes. But yeah, I love it. It's such a sick aesthetic. I hope that you enjoy my tutorial. Hi, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how I do my like McBling slash trashy Y2K rock of love girl makeup tutorial. So first it's essential. You need to curl your lashes. Okay? And then now we're going to go in with our Hangover Lip Balm from Too Faced. This one tingles a little bit when you put it on. So it's like in between like a lip plumper and a lip gloss. Loves it. Yeah. And next, because you know we haven't slept in like 5,000 days because like we're party animals and we stay up all night. So we're going to take our Peach Color Correcti by Fenty Color Correcti. I meant to say color corrector, but I like it. Rawr. And then I'm blending that shit out. Yes. Okay, so I use two different concealer shades. Hear me out. I use a darker one, so this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Concealer in the shade 4. So I put this first, then I put my foundation, and then I'll use the shade number 2. Just because the 3 is really yellow and like, I like to do number 2. <laughs> Fart jokes. No, seriously. The darker color covers my eye bags. And like see how I'm putting it on like my redness, any part of my face that has like pimples, breakouts, whatever. And then we're going to blend it. One thing I will say though, like if you like a glowy look, this concealer is really glowy. I'm an oily beast. So if you're oily, you might not like it unless you like a glow. I put a super matte foundation over top. So we're doing half and half. Making a concoction here, okay? I'm taking a bit of my Tarte Amazonian Clay Foundation, mix half of that with my Anastasia Luminous Foundation. So you've got glow and you've got super duper matte. And we find a happy medium. When I was younger, I would have gone matte all the way, but the older that I get, I mean, hey, creeping up on the big 3-0 next year. So I've got a few more wrinkles. My, my battle scars to show with uh to show for living and surviving and thriving this long okay nothing wrong with that so we blended our foundation in and see next going in with our concealer so a dot in the inner corner to brighten the darkest part of generally where we'll get the darkest circles and then on the outside to lift and snatch them cheekbones thank you very much so this is the shade number two in the same concealer. I've got a lighter shade and a darker shade. Awesome. Sometimes I even just tap it in like with my fingertip. I don't even bother blending it with a sponge, but I'll always take a bit across my eyelid as well to like prime my eyes. So right now, 
I've been loving the Cherry Blossom Powder from Huda Beauty, which is like so hard to get a hold of. It's always sold out everywhere. It's sold out online, sold out in Sephora. Can never find it. It's a bit too dark for me, so this is why I mix it. I mix half with my translucent Anastasia powder that doesn't really have a color at all. And a little bit of this like pinky cherry blossom shade. I don't know. I like it. I like it more than like a yellow. But see if I'm feeling adventurous or just extra bougie, sometimes I'll make a concoction of three. Sometimes I'll mix a little bit of the shade Butter from Fenty, which is really yellow. Sometimes I'll put a little bit of that in the mix. I don't know. I don't really have a technique. I just think it looks good on my face. So I'm blending out all my wrinkles and creases first before I put any powder on. If you don't do this, it's going to show creases. So I have to do my eye wrinkles immediately. So that's the first place I set. And then the sides of my mouth. Otherwise, if I leave it sit too long, my smile lines are just going to crease again. And I pop a bit on my chin. And so I have to do this separate just because it takes too much time. If I try to do my whole face at once, it wouldn't work. So I'm blending out my forehead wrinkles. And then we're going to take that powder and set the forehead wrinkles. Because it just takes too much time. My forehead wrinkles would crease if I tried to blend it like all at once. So that's why I do it separate. Like I'll do eyes and smile lines and then I'll do my forehead wrinkles. And see now I'm taking my fluffy brush. And I'm just sort of like pushing it into my skin, like not really dusting it off, but I'm like baking it onto my face, caking it onto my face. Okay, so this is essential for like a trashy Y2K McBling look. I've got two shades of this powder from one size. The one on the left hand side is your lighter shade, so, so that's the number three. We're going to go in with the number four because this is going to make us tan. And orange, yes. Perfect. So back in that era, we would always use a pressed powder foundation with this sponge, just like this, with the sponge, and like pat it onto our skin. So when you use a sponge, it gives you a lot more coverage because you're like baking it and setting it a lot more compared to if you just dust it over with a brush. If you use a brush, it'll lightly set it, but then it just sort of like goes everywhere. It doesn't really actually stick or stay. Bye. Okay, now we're going to bronze, bitches. So, I'm taking my Too Faced Chocolate, Chocolat Soleil Bronzier and bronzifying the shit out of my face. You feel me? Yes. So, my cheeks my nose, and I'm placing it on like quite messily, but I'm just like getting it on my face first, like getting it to stick, you know, which can be easier said than done because I use so much freaking powder. Sometimes stuff like blushes and bronzers and other powders don't really want to stick to it. So we're sitting it on our face first. Don't worry though, we're gonna blend it later. But not too much because we still want to look a little bit trashy and yeah we can't be too blended and perfect looking okay we still have to look like a little bit like muddy muddy bronzer is the trend and so are concealer lips look how white my lips are it's because i put concealer on them ha huh. so this highlight shade is a little bit too light for me normally but i really like this shimmery like peachy blush color but because we're real tan, we're going for a real tan look, I'm going to use this really gold highlighter, which is a bit too dark for me. But yeah, smile on the apples of your cheeks. We didn't put our blush up high back then. We put it right in the middle of our face. Just like that. Just dump, dump it on. Boink. <laughs> I feel so cute. But see, this is more of like a, I don't know. Not really a bronzer, because it's not dark enough to be a bronzer, but it's just like gold shimmer. It looks cool as an eyeshadow, but I don't really wear gold eyeshadow. But see, if you were a, a true, like, McLean girl, I was more of a scene queen, okay? 
I went between scene girl and like when I started getting into Japanese fashion, I went more into the gyaru or like fairy k sort of like you know that was my vibes. But I don't know why in my mature age I love this brush. It's the best concealer brush or like when you're packing like highlighter or like something really small detail. Perfect like cut crease brush. But yeah, in in my ripe old age, I'm a mature 30 year old lady. I um really enjoy doing my makeup like this. Just because I guess I've gained a bit of weight and I think black looks good on me and I love animal print and I love leopard and animal print. Wait, leopard is a type of animal, okay? Right, so now we're taking our lip gloss again and putting it over top of our concealer lips, yes. See, you can actually see the pink a lot more when you put it over top of the concealer, like a lighter color. I guess it's the same as putting like white eyeshadow all over your eyelids and then putting a brighter color over top because the white eyeshadow makes the colors pop more. See that gold highlighter that I put in my corner? Most big bling girls would wear something like this like all over their eyes, like the whole eyes, top and bottom. So you could definitely do that if you wanted to do like a natural sort of everyday look. We're gonna do thin, skinny, skinny, skinny eyebrows. See, back in the day, brow pomades like your Anastasia Dip Brow, KBD, brow pomade, whatever brand brow pomade, didn't really exist or they like, weren't really easily accessible for like the mainstream makeup wearers. So they were a bit harder to find. Maybe like your professional like makeup artist that did makeup for the stars or celebs or something. I feel like back in the day, everyone was really using, <laughs> I love it. Oh my God. See, they turn out really skinny, but um, they always end up being a little bit thicker. Look at this makeup removing oil from Caudalie. It smells like shit because I hate almond, but if you like almond, it's nice. But like, I use this to take off all the like liquid lipsticks or like waterproof makeup like on my hand because I cannot stand the smell of it on my face. I normally use a makeup cleansing balm, like the zero, zero, what is it? Zero, 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 ha. Look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing, look, look it. I'm taking my foundation powder and I am putting that over top of my eyebrow. You could do this just at the front where you want it to look ombre, like if you just put it on that little front part of your eyebrow, it would look so good because it would make your eyebrows a little bit lighter on the front. But I did it on the whole eyebrow, look at the difference. I love it. Okay, this is a throwback product. I didn't like the gold on my eyes, but I just wanted to show you guys what how girls would have normally done their makeup. So I'm gonna cover it up. I'm gonna take this white, oh, but first we're doing brows. But yeah, I end up covering up the gold. And I was like, I drew it on and I was like, oh, I know if I keep going this way, I might mess up my eyebrows. So I got like a really skinny concealer brush. Cause we're gonna conceal, conceal, conceal. Conceal, like a pencil. Cause my brows are pencil thin. Yeah. So we're going to put this white cream eyeshadow down first. And then, this is such a throwback. The Milk, what is it? Milk Pencil from NYX or NYX, however you say it. And then, same thing on the inner corner. And then we're going to put a really icy white shimmer shade over top of that. And it's going to be like blinding white, like disco ball reflecting radioactive white and it's really like if you're a really really tan girl it makes it even that more obvious when you're putting this like trashy 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 white eyeshadow all over top this is glazed donut from Ofra. come on nikki tutorials come through give us that icy white moment like a donut frosting yeah, beach. I'm using my little tiny pencil brush, just like pack, 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 man. That shade on there, like fire. Burning passion of desire. Yeah. And then that like funky cut crease brush that made an appearance before. I love you, girl. Yes. 
almost like, do you see how I got into Gyaru, like, Gongoro makeup? Like, put two and two together. This, this is the vibes. So here I'm trying to decide what colors I want to use. I've got this dark, like, chocolatey brown shade. But see, when you blend it out, it's not that dark. It's cool. And then, I think, I can't remember if this is black or blue. I think it might have been the black one. But I've got a really cool navy blue one as well. Yeah, I think that was the black. So, I think we end up using both. I don't know, my memory's bad. I recorded this video like a week ago. I don't know. I don't know, Beach. Ah, uh, yes. We are. We're using the brown first. Yeah. So on the outside corner of my eye, I've taken this cream eyeshadow stick from Nude Sticks. And then I'm just sort of like blending it. It's like a dark chocolatey brown. I want to say this color is called chocolate? No. Yes, no. This color is actually called hot stone, so it's a bit lighter than chocolate. Chocolate is dark brown. Yeah. Everything we want to do with this look, we want it to be cool toned. So we didn't really use warm colors aside from gold. We didn't know what like a warm peachy brown bronzy eye looked like. We were like silver, grey, a cool tone, almost like taupe, top, taupe, taupe, top, beigey, tan, but not golden, not olive, not warm. Very cool tone, muddy. We like mud, roll around in a mud hole, yeah. These three shades, like this mauvey grey purple, and this light gray, and then this dark charcoal gray. Starting from lightest to darkest, so I'm using that lightest gray shade first. And putting that in my crease, yeah. So we pack it with a small flat brush, and then we take a clean fluffy brush and like blend it. Yes sis, come through! So yeah, dipping back into our Stay Sassy palette from I Heart Revolution. So the first shade we used was called Whisker, because everything is cat-themed, cute. So we're packing more of that same color, it looks like. Looks like I did the other eye off camera. Cute, beach, you better work. Now we're taking that darker sort of charcoal color. It's not quite black, but it's like kind of gray, kind of brown. It's called Rufert. Rufert, like the little, the little mouse in Aristocats. Rufert. So cute. And we're just really putting it on the outside edge. And I guess we're making like a little V shape. So we're doing like a V connecting that. This is my hooded eye hat. Everything V shape looks so good. Just make a V on the outside corner of your eye. You can take it out as far as you want. You can make it as small as you want, as big as you want. You can't go wrong. So now we're taking a bit of that lighter gray shade again, Whisker. And we're putting Whisker on the inner, inner third underneath our eye, blending it into the darker shade. So I'm just sort of going back, dark light, dark light, dark light, like him, dark light. I'm not gonna pain you or make your ears bleed, so I'm gonna stop. Okay, next we're taking this shimmery sort of color. Again, it's like a taupe gunmetal grayish. It's called Do Mi So Do, Do Re Mi So. Yeah, like the scales. And then we're putting that under our eyes. Do mi so do, do mi so do re mi do so. Yeah, so it's shimmer. To be honest, if you weren't a hot girl that put gold all over your eyes, you'd probably put this gunmetal gray shimmer. Just one shade. Dip your finger in it or like those little tiny sponge ratchet applicators that we used in the like 90s, early 2000s. And now I'm dipping back into like with my pencil brush. And taking that same lovely, lovely color on the top of my eyelid as well. So pretty! Now we're going back into our glazed donut. 
and just like, I don't know, dragging it over a little bit. That's what I do with colors. I'll go back and forth between the two until I'm happy with the blend. So I'll go like from white to gray, back into gray, back into white, just like back and forth until I think they look good and blended. I just, just keep like going back and forth. It turns out better if you use two separate brushes. So like if I used a brush for the gray and a separate brush for the white, but like if you're lazy, I mean, that's okay too. Hey. Just put my mascara on. I did like 10 million layers and you know, I smudged it all under my eyes because that's how you get your eyeliner to look super duper black. You literally just rub it in and cake it everywhere. Excellent. Oh, I smudged too much. No. <laughs> That's okay. We'll let it dry. People didn't really do wing eyeliner or they really didn't do in wing eyeliner well. So I would literally use a pencil eyeliner to draw a wing. So not too sure. I'm probably going to do a technique. I've been using the Rare Beauty liquid liner so I'll use this first to sort of like sloppily draw a wing See, the reason I like the Rare Beauty one is because it's so thick, you know, it does most of the work for you. Like, you don't have to, like, go over the line over and over again. But also, you know, when we were doing wing liner with, like, a pencil, it ended up thicker anyways. So I think this is kind of dry. So once your mascara smudge is dry, you should be able to you know, sort of wipe it off. It's not working out well, but I think that's the best we can do. But I think if I start rubbing it too hard, then the concealer is just going to start to come off. Do you know what though? I can take this like powder that we used. I bet if I sort of use the powder to like cover it up. Phenomenal. I'll do it on the other side so it matches. I wonder if I took the lighter powder because like this is the one that I wear on a normal day. The but yeah, the one that I have on my face is way too dark because I did that on purpose because everyone back then was super orange. But see, because I've got this lighter shade, oh that's nice. When I put that lighter shade as like a highlight. Oh my god, that looks so pretty. And then, I'm gonna add a fake beauty spot. So I'm going to take my black eyeshadow stick. This is called Night. Just want to sharpen it first. From Nude Sticks. And then on the top half where I put this 
eyeliner. This is on the top half. I want to take a little bit of this black eyeshadow stick. And I'm going to smudge one eye at a time because otherwise if I tried to do both, the first eye would dry before I got the chance to come back to it. This is also a really great all round sort of eye technique, doing wing liner on hooded eyes. Because you get a little bit of that color, it goes up into the hood and then it's just a really flattering shape compared to like this side which is like a bit too sharp so it's a bit more obvious looking. So I'm just gonna do the other side and I'll be back. can't stop pulling duck faces because that was like a thing of the early 2000s. Now see it's probably not too necessary because we're doing this like Y2K bimbo Brett Michaels Rock of Love sort of look which is a bit messy anyways because we've been day drinking and like We've been a little bit sloppy. We're like quite go wasted, okay? But see, I get my finer eyeliner if I'm doing it on a normal day. And I'll use that to like sharpen up the tail where I want it. And then just under my eye, on the outside edge, I want to take a, t I want a little tiny brush, I want to take a little bit more of this black eyeshadow stick and just like, where my nail, where my nail, oh, where my wing sort of connects to the outside edge of my eye, just like bring that little bit of black underneath my eye. It always looks super good when you do this. I look so hot right now. Mm. Now I'll take some cheap eyelashes from eBay and stick them on your eyes. I haven't worn these before so I just want to see what they look like before I commit to gluing them on my eyes. What do we think? Do we like them? I'm a fan. So I'm using black eyelash glue because we've got such dark eye makeup. When you brush that black glue on, it's going to dry black. I hate the way white or clear eyelash glue looks with like a really dark makeup look like this. It just dries really gray and crusty. It's not cute. Never blow on your eyelashes because you're blowing germs back into your eye and that's when you get conjunctivitis and a lot of diseases. It's gross. Hot. 
gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now, back in school, I would kick so much of my mascara onto my false lash. A little bit helps it blend with your natural lashes, but we're not going for natural. We're going for really caked on, spidery, clump, clump, mascara clump. Yes. Especially on the ends, because you really want to clump the ends together. So they look like spider legs. And then boys will stay away from you because they'll say, Oh my god, does she have spiders on her eyelashes? What the heck? getting warm. I'm gonna take my hair down. The 1000 bobby pins to create this really messy bun style. It looks like you just rolled out of bed, but it actually has so many pins. If you walk, you literally jingle. And you'll lose a bobby pin because it'll drop to the floor. And we'll print everything. Bye. Bye. Yes, I'm literally teasing my hair with scissors. <laughs> That's my secret cutting technique to getting really nice layers. I'm gonna go off camera and straighten this beast. Just brush it out with my new hairbrush from Iku. Or Iku, Iku, I don't know how it's pronounced. But I'm gonna tease my hair a little bit and then I've got a couple more black pieces that I wanna add in. Bye. I feel like I should change my shirt first. I've got a tank top underneath this because I was like, oh. 
not gonna mess up my hair. I'm gonna be trying on heaps of outfits anyways, but they're mostly like trashy early 2000s clothes, which you know, there's not much to them. So a lot of them are just like bathing suit tops <laughs> and stuff that doesn't have to go over my head. So just want to stick up a few little spikes in my hair. So I've got like rocker chick hair. Yeah, that's so hot. This side has more black and this side has more blonde. I feel so cute. Leopard bra. <laughs> Hot. I'll do some contouring of my chesticles. Literally just putting bronzer. One titty done. And then maybe I'll do a little bit under my leg. I don't have collarbones because I'm chunky. I make it look like I have collarbones. Or like, I mean the definition of a collarbone. Blend that with a fluffy brush. Blend that with a fluffy brush. I'm gonna take some of my foundation powder and put that just like because I feel like it'll make everything match more. My neckline. And I mean, do we need a highlight so we look extra plastic? Yeah, this tart palette because it's a little bit more like a goldy color. Make me look tan. That's pretty obnoxious. <laughs> In that. I love it. When I was like 15, I would watch Rock of Love with my mom. And I always wanted to look like those girls that were going on a TV show to date Brett Michaels, the singer of Poison, and I was like, oh my god, I want to look like that. They're so pretty. Daisy De La Hoya on season two, oh my god, she is my idol. She's so pretty.
I don't think I've ever looked so tan in all of my life. So what are we going to do about these lips? It's literally just concealer and lip gloss. Hmm. Decisions. Should we take it off and put on like an actual lipstick? Oh, right, wipe the crusty bit in the middle. It doesn't really help when the whole lip is crusty. <laughs> At least it didn't actually shatter. Could you imagine? Seven years, bad luck. Oh no. Yeah, I think I'm gonna add a bit more lip gloss. Trixie Cosmetics? Duh. I feel so pretty right now. Oh my gosh. I feel like to complete this look I need like a like a Playboy bunny necklace. This was an old one that I bought from Spencer's and it was all painted pink but I chipped the paint so I ended up painting it with pink nail polish. And then I left the little tiny bunny silver. But yeah, this is from like circa 2009, 2010. Oh my gosh, I'm gagging. <laughs> well, I think I'm done. There isn't much else to say here. I hope that you enjoyed watching this really fun Rock of Love Girls inspired makeup tutorial. It's 2022, but I look like it's like 2006, 2007. Oh my god. I love it. <laughs>